This tutorial is part of a YouTube playlist. You can access this and many more of the tutorials in this course. If you do like this YouTube playlist and you want to access the whole course, you can do on Udemy. The link to the YouTube playlist and YouTube course is in the video description. Having now set up the framework for our project, we can now start thinking about models and database synchronization. So let's first of all integrate SQL Alchemy into our application so that we can start to build our tables and fields and develop our database. So we now need to add some new tools to our bag, our last instance here in the middle. So in addition to having our configuration options, um, available within our Flask instance, we're going to need to make sure that we have access to the tools that Flask, or sorry, that SQL Alchemy provides so that we can build and have that interactivity between our Flask application and a database. You can see the general process here. We're going to need to import or create an instance of SQL Alchemy within our create app or make it available in, within our create app function. And then that will be then be passed into our Flask instance or be part of our Flask instance. So let's go ahead and close our server and let's just make sure we know where we are. So we're currently inside the Flask FK Commerce folder. So we are going to install something. So I'm just going to CD out of that. So CD dot dot slash to move up a directory. So I'm now inside the root directory above the FK Commerce. So this whole folder here, the whole root directory. So I have access to the requirements text. So I'm going to pip install Flask SQL Alchemy. So that's going to install a few different packages. So let's take a look at that by pip freeze and then requirements text. So we'll update that. So what we should now have is we should have we have SQL Alchemy installed as well as Flask SQL Alchemy. So that's just really a bridge. Um, between Flask and SQL Alchemy for us to be able to work with Flask and SQL Alchemy or to work with SQL Alchemy within Flask. That probably sounds better. So let's now go back. I think that's all we need at this point. Let's go back into so CD back into FK Commerce. So we're back into our project app folder. So let's first of all work within our config file. Because in here, we're going to need to specify the details that we need to connect to our database. So that's what we're going to need. So now what we can do from SQL Alchemy, it's going to provide these tools. So we're going to access the engine a dot URL, and then we're going to head, go ahead and import the URL. So that's going to give us a tool which is going to help us actually build a URL, a link to our database or reference where to find the database. So now we can build a URL object. We'll do that within our default configuration. Now we might want to do that in development because actually we'll do it in development because the development settings is going to be completely different to the production environment settings potentially. So let's go ahead and say URL object and that's going to equal uh, URL dot create. So now we need to create a um, we need to define the database setup. Now, I just remembered we need to install something else. So we're going to need a, a database driver. So that is basically something we need to install. So we have that compatibility. We know how to actually connect and manage and work with a database at a kind of really low level. So we're going to need to install these drivers, and that's going to be the Postgres SQL drivers so that we can build that communicate with the database. So these are just uh, this is just a, a something that we have to have these drivers in order to connect to the database. So there's two two or three different options. We're going to use uh, Postgres um, Postgres SQL plus the PS was it PSY COP G2. So these are the drivers that we're going to be using to connect to our database and manage the connection to the database. So we're going to need to set the username. Uh, so we're going to get the username from our environment variables. So get uh, env. So we're going to set up an environment variable called db username. That's the first job. Apologies. Zoom in a bit. And then next up, we need a comma. 
and then let's go for the password for the database. So that's going to equal os.get environment variables. So that's going to be then the db underscore password. Okay. And then after that, this gets really annoying, this box sometimes. I do apologize. Uh, then we're going to need a host. We're going to need to know where to find this database, right? So os.get env. And this time it's going to be called db host. Seems good. And then finally, we're going to need the database name. So the database, we may have multiple databases. So we need to select the right database. So let's go for a database name, db underscore name. So we need to now go into the environment variables and set this up. So that's going to be the username, uh, password, host, and name. DB host, uh, DB name. Okay. So we just need to specify that. Now we know the username is Postgres. We know the password because we've been connecting to it via uh, the adminer. Now the host, the host is going to be in this case, the local loopback, so 127.0.0.1, because the Docker container um, will be within our local network. And then we don't need to specify a port, we could do, but in actual fact, we're using the default Postgres port 543, 5432. So we don't need to specify it, but we could define a separate port or different port for Postgres if we set up our Docker container separately. So we're not going to do that. So we don't need to do that. Then the database name is SK Commerce. OK, so those are all the details um, that we might might be familiar with because we have been using those in AdMiner to connect to the database. OK, so let's put that all together in the SQL Alchemy, uh, the SQL Alchemy database uh, URI. Okay, so that's the location where to find the database and how to actually access it. So we call that URL object. There we go. So that's the configuration for our database sorted in terms of connecting to the database. All right, so let's let's now move into the initialization file. So we're going to meet, need to make a new instance. Uh, database instance. So for that, we're going to need to from Flask. Let's go ahead or Flask SQL Alchemy. Let's go ahead and import the SQL Alchemy. All right. So from this, we can then create an SQL Alchemy database instance. So database equals SQL Alchemy. So think of this as, as the way to actually access the database. So within this instance will be all the details and how to connect to it and manage the database and so on. So anything we want to do regarding the database, we're going to send to this instance so that we can then communicate and work with the database. So we're going to need to initialize this. So we're going to extend the create app slightly. What we're going to do, because there will be a few different initializations that we're going to need to make. So we call this initialize. Uh, extensions and then pass in app and then that is obviously calling a function called initialize extension so now what we need to do is actually create this function okay let's pass in app and then what we can now do is define our database dot initialize dot app and then app. OK, so we initialize extensions. So what we're doing here, this function is called with the Flask application instance app as its argument. So the purpose here is to initialize various Flask extensions that are used within the application. So one of them being the database. So down here we have database in it. So within this initialization extension function, we have the database extension. This is the SQL Alchemy. Um, initialization. So what we're doing here is that we are essentially just initializing our application for our app, passing in the app there. Right. So before we forget, let's not let's not forget to install. So I just need to come back out again of our directory into the main directory. So we are going to need to install our database driver. So pip install 
and this is going to be the PSY COP2 binary. So I'll go ahead and install that. So that's all good to go. So let's CD back into our FK Commerce. Uh, let's go for a flask run. Okay, so it looks like potentially there is, oh, because, yeah, okay. So potentially there is a problem here on line 23, the database initialization. So potentially there is an issue with the code that we've generated so far. So the problem here, apologies, it's not dot app, it's underscore app. Just taking a quick look at that. That potentially will resolve that problem. Let's give that a go again. Okay, so our server is running. So it looks like the code we've added so far is good to go. So at the moment we can't test our database, but the next step, we go ahead and create some models and then we migrate those models to the database. At that point, we can test the connectivity and maybe troubleshoot if we do have any issues.